back to this Curry International Circuit for round 8 of the 2016 Audi R8 LMS Cup. Currently only 3 points separating the top 4 drivers at the driver's standings. Martin Lee took uh, the checkered flag and it will start from pole position this afternoon uh, with his 3 main title rivals including Alex Yong and uh, Frankie Chen and Martin Ram followed behind. We should also watch out for the M Cup contenders and uh, with lots of new faces joining the race this time, it's going to be very exciting to watch. So before all the cars move on to the grid, now it's our time to cross over to our commentator for more information. Thank you, Sophie. I said this morning it was going to be a super Sunday and so far it's been absolutely scintillating. If you missed the first race this morning, well, you missed an absolutely thrilling round where we had a little bit of uh, handbags between Piccarello and Alex Young. They both did not finish the race. The stewards interviewed the drivers and the uh, result of that was the uh, Belgian has been uh, penalised 10 places, which means he will be starting in P13 on row number 7. Alex Young is on P2 and now where we just had two main protagonists going for the overall title we have opened it wide open to four title challenges we have Piccarello on 96 Alex Young on 95 Martin Lee on 94 and Rahul Fry on 93 Piccarello just having that one point on Super Pole okay let's now go through and see what happened <laughs> chance I go inside and I make it so it's good good race so March Lee takes the 25 points it was a very controversial finish Sean and the stewards I think they got the decision right basically well I mean of course they got the decision right they're the ultimate arbiters of what the end result will be but you will have your favourites, you'll have your own ideas on who was at fault and who was not at fault. OK, ultimately the officials make the decision, whether rightly or wrongly, and Alessio Picariello gets a 10 position grid position uh, penalty. So he'll be working his way through from the, uh, the back of the field. Of course, Alex Young is at the front of the field, but the championship wide open, four cars, three points. Very, very impressive. But let's take a look at this Korea international circuit. OK, as you can see, we are in South Korea, down in Mokpo, and the track is 5.6 kilometres, 18 turns, and it's counterclockwise. They start on the home straight, and they go up to two quick turns, as you'll see just in a couple minutes. There you go, two quick turns, down this long 1.1 kilometre straight to the slowest corner of the circuit, turn three, then uphill to turn four. This is where all the action happened, turns five and six in the last race, flat out in turns seven and eight. Then it comes down to turn nine, ten, round this double apex, 11. You need to get that right for the setup, the speed, through to turn 14 and right through 18. And that is your lap of the track. There is March Lee, owner of Phoenix Racing Asia. He is also on P1. Sophie is down in pit lane. She's with the director of Audi Sport Customer Racing Asia, Bern Gers. Hi, Bern. Welcome to the show. Three points separating the top four drivers. How, how do you see the race unfolding this afternoon? Yeah, after this super exciting race this morning, we have a totally mixed uh, grid now. Uh, we can see Alex now and Marci Lee in the front. Marci has 35 kilograms, so he's pretty heavy. And then we have Martin Rump and Frankie Cheng Chong Fu behind them. So they were not on the podium this morning, so they will chase them. And then we have Alessio coming from position 13, since he got penalized by 10 positions. So he will come up from all the back. And we have a local hero, um, Keiyu, and he will also try to get on the podium again so let's see it will be very interesting today 
Okay, so everyone just sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. It's our time to back to our commentator. Thank you, Sophie. As you can see, we've got uh, hospitality there. People in the hospitality boxes. Audi are doing a fantastic job here. Korea is a major market for the car brand, and they are here with the Audi R8 LMS Cup, Asia's most prestigious motorsport series. So uh, everyone's enjoying themselves in corporate. I'm sure you're enjoying them yourself on the internet. Of course, we've got everything here on the website, www.audi.lmscup.com. What a race we are talking about this morning. You couldn't have played it out any better. Two, the two title protagonists, the young gun, Alessio Picarillo and Alex Jung, tied for championship points coming in at the midpoint of the season. They clashed, they came together. It was almost inevitable. I said to Alex Jung earlier, was it ultimately going to happen? He said, yeah, well, maybe you're right. We're always on track together. But now we have four drivers within three points in the championship. What a way to go through to the final end. But before we uh, go any further, let's take a look at what scrutineering's all about in the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Scrutineering, primary scrutineering is basically to say, check the safety of the car for it going onto the circuit, uh, obviously the driver's equipment as well. Uh, the other side of it is the eligibility side, and that is depends on the championship regulations. Um, we check certain things on the car, whatever the regulations are for that championship. The main thing I'm looking for is, ride height is a very crucial on the front of these um, particular R8s. Uh, they're very close to the wind. Also, the, the camber, the wheel camber, that is crucial as well. They're trying to get to the maximum that what is permitted in the regulations. We do check uh, the suspension. Um, we do check the steering. We do check uh, the electronics on the car. The, um, all the data is logged. And well, that's what we're there for, to try and make everybody uh, run to the regulations. We're not just there just to wait and sit and catch them cheating. We actually, if we do see something wrong with the car, we will tell them before that. Alex, March, you benefit from the incident in the first race. Uh, he's on pole and you start from the second. Is he going to let you win this time? March never lets anyone win, but um, you know, he's got 50 kilograms on the car, so if I can get him to turn one, then I think he'll be good. <laughs> okay, good luck. And enjoy the race. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sophie. So there you go. We've got about five minutes now until the lights go off for round eight here at the Korea International Circuit. If you haven't been here before, it's an absolutely brilliant track. It's uh, very underused, um, should be used more often. It's a great uh, 5.6 kilometer track, which is about three and a half miles long in the old English measurement. And as you can see, the safety car is just pulling away. So uh, it's gonna check the track because we did have a saloon car race earlier on and there was a couple of crashes around the track. So uh, I guess they're just gonna make sure that there's no debris around the circuit. Okay, Sophie's moved from Alex Jung and now she's down with uh, Frankie Chen. Frankie, I know you have a tough time with penalty in qualifying yesterday and what place would be good enough um, in this race to consider as a successful weekend? Yeah, it was a pity that uh, you know had this penalty but nevertheless, I think that the uh, no, the car works fine and it works well, and uh, I'm just trying to have a clean race. And uh, obviously, Machi has a extra balance on; it would be a disadvantage for him. But Alex is just on my left side, which he is very free to run. So I hope give them a hard race and uh, try to obviously be on the podium, maybe for the win. Hope for all the best for you and back to your guys. Thank you, Sophie. I think the main worry for. Frankie Chen there is Rahul Fry right behind him because Rahul is on 93 points. She's in the title hunt. She's three behind the leader Alessio. So I'm, I'm sure she wants to get past Frankie and Marchie with Marchie's 50 kgs uh, by about turn three or four. 
I'd imagine that's probably pretty right. But additionally to what you say is that the car on screen, Rahel Fry, she's been uh, right at the front of this title battle all year. She's a former race winner here. And uh, so too uh, Frankie Cheng in 2014. So they're capable of doing this. And uh, now, as of this morning, Marchie Lee too is a former race winner here. And, and Alex Jung, in fact, has um, been victorious. So, gee, this is uh, going to be interesting. Then you add into that, of course, a number of other variables, one of which is Alessio Picariello, who's uh, desperate to make up for what just been handed to him this morning, a 10-position grid penalty, and get back in the championship points. And uh, he'll be doing everything he can. We don't know what damage may be uh, residual after that contact. Uh, the teams have repaired the cars very quickly. Of course, the absolute racing team of Alessio Picariello and the uh, Phoenix Racing Asia team of two-time champion Alex Jung both cars are on the grid. Both cars, they tell us, are fine. But who knows? Little things happen. A connection could have been knocked. A, a bolt could have come loose. Anything could happen. So that will be playing in the back of their minds. But uh, keep an eye on Alessio, because I reckon he's still a fair chance to finish top five uh, in this race. And also, you can't discount KOU. He's in front of his home fans as well. And uh, you've got a little dark horse as well that uh, you think could do quite well. Number 37. Well, Anthony Liu, Chinese driver, is a uh, three-time race winner at uh, Career International Circuit in GT Asia. He doesn't drive an Audi R8. He said to me this morning, he said, this thing's actually pretty nice. He said, it's probably nicer than the Ferrari I normally drive. But uh, he has good experience. I said to him, look, I thought you might have moved a bit further forward as the cars get ready to leave the grid for their uh, roll around to a standing start for the second race. I said, I thought you might have been further up the grid. He said, no, given that I'd, I'm still coming to grips with the car, he said, uh, after qualifying and everything else, he said, I knew the top guys would start with brand new tyres. So he said, I elected an alternate strategy, learn the car, battle with the older tyres and have brand new tyres for this second race. The temperature too has gone up since this morning. It's now, there's intermittent sun, it's patchy cloud. This morning it was full overcast, so the temperature has also risen. What that will do is that will put additional pressure on the guys that are starting on older rubber or the tyres that they used this morning. So there is a, a bit of a challenge there. So keep an eye on the number 37 car bit further to the right of field he's going to start inside the top 10 again and he will be uh, one i believe to keep a, uh, a close watch on but take us through the grid graham and uh, let's have a look at how they start okay so as they move off let's just uh, go through these rows here row one is mark Gilly. he's currently got 50 kgs extra he is 94 points and third in the title battle in p2 is alex young he has 95 points overall and he's second in the title chase. Row two, well, that's Frankie Chen and Martin Rupp. Row three is the green castrol car of Rahul Fry. She has the extra 30 kgs for finishing second. At 93 points overall and currently lying fourth in the title chase. And P6 is Dan Wells. Row four is Aditya Patel from India and Jan Kissel from Poland. And he has the extra 20 kgs for finishing third. Row five is number 11, KOU from South Korea. And number 37, Anthony Liu. Row six is Sun Jing Zhu and Jeffrey Lee. Row seven, the... Uh, penalised Alessio Piccarello. He has 96 points because he got Super Bowl, which adds one point to his 95 from uh, last weekend. And uh, he's leading at the moment from 14 P14's Greg Taylor. And last place, P15, is Vincent Florendo. Vincent Florendo, and he is from the Philippines. So we have 10 pro drivers, 5 amateur drivers, and we have, of course, 13 and it is a standing start so that's why everyone's focused on Alex Jung because he has Marchie Lee in front of him on the outside of himself on the grid and Marchie has 50 kgs and that really does tell as a big handicap for Marchie Lee standing start if you can imagine trying to pull 50 kgs from a standing start yourself in a car with all that extra weight it's going to be pretty hard for Marchie Lee to defend himself on to the first turn. So here they come round and uh, we'll be waiting. They're just uh, warming their tyres up. And as you can see, Korea International Circuit. It's cost about 88 billion won. Uh, you may think that's quite a lot. It's 78 million dollars. Very cost effective in uh, today's money. And as you can see, they had uh, two circuits here. Um, normally you can take a uh, 
left turn there goes straight on and that cuts the corner and then there's this extended international circuit where then they go on to a couple of more corners after they've done turn 11 they come through to turns 12 13 through to 18 and they'll come through here this is a quite a technical piece here into turn 14 they need to keep their speed through here and then they go around this turn 15, 16. If you've seen the promotional video of this Mokpo International Circuit, they had grand designs for this. Uh, right there, that was going to be a Monaco Harbour, I think, where people could actually uh, see the boats more up and watch the racing. I'm sure uh, they've still got uh, that in the future, if they can get more racing here. As I say, when you walk around the track, it's a joy for the drivers. It uh, produces some great racing and it is very underused. There needs to be more racing here at the Korean International Circuit. And uh, Audi are glad to be here because Korea is a huge market for Audi. And uh, Audi NOS Cup is here for round eight. And we're just waiting for them to get in line. As you can see, Marchalese on the left hand side as you see the grid. And Alex Jung is on the right hand side. So Alex has the advantage due to Marchi having the extra weight, so there's a drag race right the way through to the first turn. So they're just getting into position. I think that's uh, Jan Kissel, just uh, making sure that uh, he is in the right place. And we just wait for the lights to come up for round eight of the Audi R8 NMS Cup. We wait for the flag to wave at the back. Here we go, I think uh, it's all checked. The green flags, everything's okay. High octane stuff here. We wait for the lights. And it's race time at the Korea International Circuit. And it looks like Marchi Lee is going to have to defend this position. And away goes Alex Jung. Alex Jung has that lead. Then it's Marchi Lee, but straight up the inside is also Frankie Chen and Martin Rump. Martin Rump has got second place. So it's Alex Jung down this long 1.1 kilometer straight. Can he defend himself from Martin Rump? Martin Rump's got a great record. If he gets the lead, he normally wins the race from start to finish. Martin Rump really putting Alex Jung under pressure. Also, Dan Wells is there with Jan Cassell. Outside is Frankie Chen taking the uh, Marchi Lee as well. Here comes Martin Rump. Is he going to try and get the lead? Alex Jung defends his position in turn three. There's a whole host of them there, a gaggle of them there with uh, Jan Cassell trying to defend himself from Rahul Fry. And it's still Alex Jung from Martin Rump. Then it's Martin Lee. After that, it's Frankie Chen, Rahul Fry. There's Jan Cassell. That's your top six. And it's gone wide. Martin Rump overcooks it. And Alex Jung is in the lead from Martin Lee. Now Martin Lee could be the rear gunner here, protecting Alex Jung's position. Martin Rump's gone four by four. I don't know where he's gone. Uh, but still Alex Jung coming through turn seven and there's Marchi Lee followed by Rahul Fries in third place from then that looks like it is still uh, we'll have a wait and see if that's Martin Ramp who's rejoined but it's still Marchi Lee protecting his uh, teammate Alex Jung Alex Jung's out for that 25 points there's Marchi Lee the Rahul Fries in third we'll just wait to see I think that's Frankie Chen in fourth place yeah, Martin Rump holding down position five. You've got to wonder about that re-entry. That caused a bit of drama. It caused a bit of drama too for Alessio Picarello, who'd got up to seventh place by the time they got down to turn four from position 13. Six cars. He was moving forward, but he got caught wide with Martin Rump bunching the field up and forcing them to the outside to avoid him. So that set him back a little bit, but they're back under action now. But look at this lead. This is the opening lap. So it looks like Alex Jung's taken a similar approach to what he did in that opening race at Sepang, where he really got the tyre pressures up high and pushed very hard to the start, broke the back of the field, got away from them, and then just controlled the race from that point. And of course, as we saw, he won that race. His teammate is behind him. They just drove away from the field in all essence in that opening race. They were real stars. The other star with them, Alessio Picarello. But it's interesting to see as we get across the line, it's Alex Jung, Marchi Lee, Rahul Fry, position three. Aditya Patel, good start for him, up to position four. Martin Rump holds down position five. Then it's Frankie Cheng, Dan Wells, Alessio Picarello shown in position number eight. So he's moved forward a lot off the start. Now what he has to make sure is that field doesn't get away from him too quickly. So down this long straight and Alex Jung, he can now just pace himself. He puts the pace to the race and he knows that he's got his teammate March Lee behind him. And I'm sure March Lee knows that uh, Rahul Fry. Looks like Ditya Patel and Rahul Fry, they've changed there. And here's Martin Rump as well. So we've got a 
good order of drag race down to turn four. Martin Rumps on the outside, Aditya Patel's on the inside, the green car there is Rahul Fry. Also getting the mix is Frankie Chance, there's four cars chasing, and Martin Rumps going to try and come on the inside here of Aditya Patel, but Aditya Patel keeps the track position. Rahul Fry cuts off Frankie Chan as well, so the battle for P3 is between four cars here as Alex Young goes over and comes down into turn number nine. And it's Young in the lead from Mark Julie, Aditya Patel, Rahul Fry, Martin Rump, Frankie Chen. The top six are really going at it at the moment. Yeah, it's a pretty hot pace at the front of the field, but this is where we talk about these big international Formula One circuits are designed for drivers. They're not designed for amateur drivers, they're designed for professionals, which means they have a lot of mid to high speed corners. As we see, that was Frankie Chang being forced wide then, trying to get around, uh, looked like a Ditchie Patel, a little bit further back behind these two. So the race is really heating up. The pros are applying the pressure. Alex Young's pace is impressive because he doesn't have an additional success weight penalty. What that comes as a result of is finishing finishing on the podium of the previous race. The man who's behind him, Marchie Lee, won the race, carries 50 kilos. Second place last time round carries 35 uh, kilograms. Third place carries 20 kilograms. So uh, those weight penalties do make a little bit of difference. Not as big a difference as you'd expect, but certainly stopping the car and accelerating out of the corners doesn't seem to be making a huge difference to Marchie Lee. He's carrying 50 kilograms of success penalty. He's six seconds, sorry, four seconds now up on third place, Aditya Patel. Now there's the man I was talking about. That's Anthony Liu, currently in position number 11, leading the AM class and right behind Jan Cashel, who was third in that opening race. So after two laps, we have Alex Young in a commanding lead by 2.2 seconds from Marshall Lee. Then Aditya Patel, Martin Rapp, Rahul Price has dropped down to fifth from Frankie Chen, and Dan Wells has tacked onto the back of them. Look at this train here. Aditya Patel, Martin Rump still not giving up here, trying to go on the wide outside, but Aditya Patel protects his position. Rahul Fry is watching very closely just to see if there's any contact, because if there's any contact, it's slow him down. A little bit of a debris comes off the track, but uh, nothing's too serious. And here's Martin Rump again trying to go on the wide outside. Now, Dan Wells is under pressure from Alessio Picarello, and he's trying to side through the field here, Picarello. Let's see that later on if he gets that position but it's still Jung from Marchie Lee coming through into third place we've got uh, Martin Rump just giving that Aditya Patel a nudge there and Martin Rump tries to take the inside Aditya's trying to fight hard but now Rahul Fry's got a chance to overtake Aditya Patel as well so Martin Rump takes third place can Rahul Fry now find a way past Martin Rump and Aditya Patel as Patel is in fourth place Rahul Fry is in fifth then uh, Frankie Chen and Dan Wells, but Alessio Picarello was on the charge as well. So uh, Picarello is picking them up as well, but it's still Ralph Fry fifth, Frankie Chen sixth, Dan Wells seventh, Alessio Picarello eighth. But maybe Picarello will uh, get past them at the uh, end of this lap. Well, his pace at the moment isn't anywhere near the pace that it needs to be, 210. Of course, he's caught in traffic. He has Dan Wells, a very experienced young driver in this part of the world. Of course, he's English. The uh, KCMG Chop Tails driver was uh, involved in the open wheel scene most recently in, uh, in the last few years. And he has been a very, very competitive driver in this field since he started here on Friday. Got in the car on Saturday and qualified strongly. Of course, started the opening race from fourth position and showed very strong turn of pace in the opening race. I said to him afterwards, why didn't you move forward? You dropped back a little bit pace-wise. He said, well, quite clearly, I didn't want to bend the car. I didn't want to get a mark on the car. I wanted to finish the race. That was my goal. I didn't have any expectation about position. I wanted to race with these guys. And he said, I loved it. This time round, watch out. I'm going to have a bit more of a go. He's locked in battle at the moment. Top of the screen, you might just see him there, the blue and white car with the... Uh, Alessio Picarello right behind him. They're battling over position number seven, but the man in front, 207.465, fastest car on the field by uh, about seven tenths of a second. Over teammate uh, Margie Lee, as you see, Rahul Frey still looking very racy. She said after the first race, finished on the podium, she was very surprised. Cannot unlock any speed out of that Castrol Audi this weekend. She's very disappointed not to be battling with the leaders. She was hoping this race might uh, provide a little bit more action, but at the moment, currently position number five with uh, Martin Rump and Aditya Patel immediately ahead of her. And she's got those extra 30 kgs to uh, be concerned about as Frankie Chen tries to uh, get past her through the sections of turns four to six. But it's still Alex Young, he's about 2.8 in the lead from March Elite. He's uh, got 10 laps to go. I'm sure he's going to be pacing himself okay through the uh, next 
couple of laps before uh, we get down to the last five. I think Martin Rump is going to try and get onto the back of Mark Lee. And as you can see there, there's uh, Martin Rump has put some daylight between himself and Aditya Patel. And uh, then there's a whole train of them between Patel, Rahul Fry, Frankie Chen, Dan Wells and Alessio Piccarello. He could, he could actually jump up to uh, P4 uh, by the end of the race. And then if he's in P4, you know that he's going to be trying for the last podium spot just to prove a point at the moment. But there you can see the train. There is Aditya Patel from Rahul Fry. In the white car there is Frankie Chen, followed by Dan Wells. That's the blue car. And the last car on that train in P8 is Piccarello. And Dan Wells tries the inside line but just doesn't make it. And there he's under pressure from Piccarello. Yeah, you can see, oh, what a place to make a move. A big dive up the inside. That's an amazing run coming through uh, turn 16, 17 and, and the run onto the front straight. Nice move forward for Picariello. So he will continue that forward march, but he's locked away in that uh, in that pack at the moment. Immediately behind them, KOU Jan Kishil and Anthony Liu, the leading amateur driver, are uh, locked in combat for uh, position number nine. KOU probably a little bit further back than we expected to see him, but uh, still a long way to go. Now, talking about Martin Rump, two-time winner this year, won the opening race of the year, also won in Thailand, 206.8 last time round. So he's the fastest in the field. There's Rahul Frey, very aggressive move on the run down to turn three to uh, close any passing opportunity by uh, Frankie Cheng, who's behind her. But the one they've got to watch out for is Alessio Piccarello. Now that is Jan Kishiel running very, very wide at the bottom of the pack. He's now dropped back behind uh, that is KOU and the car with the flashing lights is Anthony Liu, who's looking to try and get past And Now here's another move. Frankie Cheng up the inside of Rahel Frey, and that's allowed Alessio Piccarello to close. Now, he's not going to try and move like we saw. I don't expect he is. Oh, spin! Spin by Frankie Cheng. That might have been contact there with Rahel Frey. And that was uh, disappointing for the Chinese motorsport hero. But uh, that has opened the door well and truly for Alessio Piccarello. Now up into position number five. And the next one in front of him, Aditya Patel. This is the way things go. It's very racy in the middle of the pack and action happens anywhere. Oh, off now. That is uh, that is Anthony Liu in the number 37 car. So he's had some sort of issue. We've got a tyre problem or uh, he's now just ahead there of Frankie Cheng. He might have been trying to avoid the Chinese driver. That may have been uh, the reason why. Of course, both Chinese drivers. This is the debut run, of course, of uh, Anthony Liu, but the racing goes on. Now, the two KCMG cars appear to be together. So... Dan Wells now seems to have dropped back. KOU's gone missing out of that uh, out of that order. This is a long way from over, and there's plenty going on right through this field, bro. And it's all changed with eight laps to go. We've still got Alex Young in the lead from March Lee, Martin Rump and Dieter Patel. Then Alessio has gone from P13 up to P5. Rahul Fry has dropped down one. Rahul Fry, of course, had that contact between herself and Frankie Chen that span Frankie Chen around turns at six. So seventh is Dan Wells, eighth is Jan Kissel, ninth the top amateur. Here's a replay. Now let's just see what happens with Rahul Fry. Now Rahul Fry is now just got overtaken by Frankie Chen. They come through turn five. Rahul now tries to come up the inside of Frankie. I don't think Frankie sees her and just gets tapped at the end there at the bottom and spins around. And that just opens up the door for Alessio and he grabs it with both hands and he now is up to P5. So that's lap five of 13 and that's five to go of 13 because we're currently on lap eight. So as they go through, you can see Alessio in fifth place, Rahul Fries in sixth. Danwell seventh in the amateur class. Anthony Liu is leading from Greg Taylor, Sunjin Zhu. That's your amateur class podium from Jeffrey Lee and Vincent Florendo. And KOU, well, something seems to happen because he's dropped down to P15. So uh, I don't think he's actually gone past us at the moment. So we'll wait and see if KOU is still on the track at the moment. He's gone past sector one and he's actually on sector two. So he must have uh, gone a bit wide somewhere. But KOU is still on the track. So it's Young Lee Rump. That's your podium with eight laps to go. Interesting result if it ends like that, Graham, is that you'll have two Phoenix Racing Asia drivers that are going to be at the top of the championship point standings in their debut year in Asia. They've had a very, very good season in both the GD Asia series with both Alex Young and Marchie Lee also compete. They're race winners in that series. And of course, here we have another victory pending 
for Alex Young. Margie Lee had a victory this morning. This could be their fourth victory of the season of uh, 2016 Audi R8 LMS Cup. So a fantastic opportunity so far for uh, Phoenix Racing Asia. But still a long way to go. And look at that man at the top of the screen. Two-time winner already this year. And he is hauling in Margie Lee in uh, a huge fashion. 2.06.7 last time. A full second he took out of the race one winner and fastest man on the circuit by quite a margin. In fact, compared to Piccarello, Piccarello 2.07.0 last time round. So that's not bad. His pace has really improved now that he's got away from the pack. He's got fresh air in front of him and uh, he may well be able to catch Aditya Patel. Currently, the deficit, just on 1.2 seconds. So let's see how this plays out as we get towards the midpoint of this race. Halfway house here in round eight of the Audi R8 LMS Cup here at the Korea International Circuit. Seven laps to go. Alex Jung is way out in front. It's all about P3, I think, at the moment. Martin Rump, he's uh, broken the back of Edita Patel and Alessio and Rahul Fry. But Alessio is a big old fighter. He's uh, gone from P13 up to P5. He's got seven laps to uh, do some magic to get closer to Martin Rump. But uh, Alex Jung driving like a metronome. He definitely can cruise around here, make sure he finds all the right points on the apex of corners. He can uh, has a 4.2 second lead over Marchi Lee, his teammate, and I'm sure Marchi Lee can uh, make sure that Martin Rump can uh, slow down a little bit when Martin Rump comes up to Marchi Lee. Maybe Marchi just uh, slows down off the pace a little bit there. So it's Alex Young, the leader, picking up 25 points, and that's going to be huge when you think that Alessio at the moment is going to uh, fall off the pace here and Rahul Fry at the moment in P6 as well. So it's Alex Young, Marjali in the lead there. Martin Rump, you can see in the background, just appearing. He is chasing hard to get to P2. There at the back, there's a good old ding-dong for uh, P4 between Aditya Patel, Alessio and Rahul Fry with Dan Wells in seventh. And the two KCMG cars are seventh and eighth. As I say, the top amateur is Anthony Liu from Greg Taylor, Sin Jing Zhu, Jeffrey Lee, and Vincent Florendo. They are, that's the amateur class at the moment. So we've got six laps to go. Alex Young looks like he's uh, over the horizon, done and dusted for P1. Just got to look after the car, look after the tyres, make sure he doesn't burn them off too quickly. The next story is can Martin Rump get close to Marchi Lee? Uh, Marchi Lee, of course, knows there's all the technicians working out all the uh, permutations for this race. And uh, here's Martin Rump. He's closing them down right behind them. Here's Alessio on Aditya. Is Alessio going to manage to take that inside line from Aditya Patel? He's coming through and he's up to P4. That's nicely done there by Alessio. He's definitely on the charge and he's not going to stop until he gets through to Martin Rump there. So it is Alessio P4, Aditya P5, Rahul P6. Then it's Dan Wells in P7 from Yang Kissel. After that, you've got Anthony Lu and Frankie Chen is in P10. There is Alessio. He came off worse with the stewards today. Had a 10 grid penalty, but has managed to claw some of that back from going from P13 up to P5. So uh, that's eight places he's managed to get back in uh, just about uh, six laps or so. And this is a truly international series. If you think the Audi R8 LMS Cup is just Asian, well, just go and look at the drivers, really. We've got drivers from uh, Belgium, Australia, India, uh, UK, Estonia, Poland, Philippines, Switzerland. So it's a truly global series here. And here is the South Korean KOU. He is currently trying to get back to the field. He's coming up close to Vincent Florendo. Seems to be a little bit of uh, damage on the left-hand side of the bodywork. Maybe he's uh, just nudged someone. That light just does seem to be a little bit of damage there. Nice to see that he's uh, taking the courtesy of Hazard Flashes too, just to alert people that he might be a uh, mobile chicane, they'd have to get around him. That's not what he was hoping for this weekend, of course fourth in the uh, the opening race was a nice result, but here we have the uh, leading amateur driver, he's not very far off the tail of the pro drivers, 
Anthony Liu, of course, is number one in the class. There is Frankie Cheng, who's behind Anthony Liu. You see them just in the background, the back of frame. Rahul Fry immediately ahead of Dan Wells with Wells' teammate, Jan Kishil, who got a little bit caught up in that incident, I think, with Frankie Cheng. They are battling for position number six, currently held, of course, by Rahul Fry, who's very close to that inside wall, trying to um, perhaps limit some of the drag on the car and uh, keep her advantage ahead of Dan Wells, who is very, very aware of the virtues of aerodynamics, given that he's a, uh, a very competitive open wheel driver. But up front, here is this battle for second. And I really, sadly for Marchi Lee, don't believe there's much he's going to do, be able to do rather, to keep Martin Rump, who again is a two-time winner this year, the young Estonian, on his debut in the Cup has really been one of the sensations. And like Alessio Piccarello, I think they dominated last year's Formula Masters China Series. I think the, the numbers are like 15 of 18 wins were shared between the Estonian and the Belgian drivers. Very capable in any performance vehicle. And here they are, right at the front, this Audi R8 LMS Cup between them. A lot of podium finishes, and they're right at the front of this field. There's the big 50 kilo, the fluoro, fluoro yellow sticker on the right side window there of Marchie Lee and the Chakcham double duck car. That signifies that he was the race winner last time out. But sadly for him, unless something tragic happens to Alex Jung and he can get that menace off his tail in the champion car, he uh, will not be standing on the top step of the podium this time round. And Martin Rump will be doing everything he can to get past the driver from Hong Kong, the 2012 Cup champion, and move himself back into this title race, which uh, at the moment is very, very close at the top. So the top three with four to go is Alex Jung from Marchi Lee, Martin Rump, Alessio Piccarello that you can see in the background. Martin Rump just had a look. He's sizing uh, Marchi Lee up for this long turn two down to turn three, 1.1 kilometers. Can he slip stream? Marchi Lee here. Is he gonna go left? Is he gonna go right? Is there going to be a feint and then quickly duck down the inside? Let's just see. There's, got, uh, there's Alex Jung in the lead. Now let's see what uh, is going to happen. Martin is just not close enough there for uh, an overtake manoeuvre. So Marchi Lee keeps second place. Now if Martin gets past Marchi, then that's a red flag to a ball for Alessio because Alessio will think, well, if Martin can do it, I can do it. So uh, if Martin Rump does get past Mark Lee, then Alessio knows that Marchi has that extra 50 kgs. So that will spur on Alessio to try and get onto the last place on the podium with uh, just four laps to go. And there is Marchi in second place coming through this awkward 4-5 and turn 6 section. Normally sees trouble. I think we were here last year and there was a bit of a problem between cars at turn 6 last year as well. So they come through, flat out turn 7 and 8. It's a beautiful track here. You can see the undulations here. The drivers like it here at the Korea International Circuit, and it's a great long circuit as well, 5.6 kilometers, about three and a half miles, so they can actually work out their strategy, work out where to uh, overtake and psych out the other drivers. It's interesting, uh, talking to Marchi Lee earlier in the weekend, he looked like he was he's feeling a bit lethargic and a bit lazy. He said, oh, I don't really have the motivation, Sean. I'm not sure whether I'm up to this anymore. He's just turned 40, as has Alex Young. I don't know that I can do it. And of course, any time Marchi Lee tells you something like that, you know it's completely tongue-in-cheek. And the opposite is most likely fact. And look at how quick he's been. What was interesting to me is you've got a young guy straight out of open wheelers who's a real charger in this field through the second stanza or, or the second stage of this race. Um, it, very tight and demanding, very technical. Marchi Lee actually pulled a gap on Martin Rump despite that additional 50 kilos. Where Martin is able to take back that advantage is right now on the main straight with the acceleration that Marchi doesn't have in comparison to the car behind him, the number 18 champion car, and under brakes. That is where Martin has a good chance to catch him. But in the, in the tighter stuff, in the more technical part of this circuit, this old bloke in uh, car number 88 in position number two, still doing a very, very good job. Talking of old guys, the 40 year old at the front of the field in the car number one, he too still got it, you would say. So here's Martin Rump. Looks like a little bit of tire came off there. Something came off. So uh, I don't know whether that's debris off the track, but uh, Martin Rump, a bit of the side, I think, has uh, come off Martin Rump's car there at the back. But he's taken second place, and that is a red flag to a bull for Alessio, because Alessio is now about four seconds behind Marchi Lee. He knows Marchi Lee's got that extra 50 kgs, so Alessio now is going to have the hammer down for the next three laps to get that last spot on the podium. So Alex Jung is in the lead from Martin Rump from Estonia. There you can see 
just uh, if you look at the back of the car, not this side, but the other side, you can just see the wheels jutting out. Looks like a bit of bodywork came out on the overtaker manoeuvre down that long straight between turns two and three. And what's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? No, it's an angry Belgian. Alessio is trying to get past Marchi Lee. He's uh, going to be on Marchi Lee's tail over the next two laps. As you can see, he's uh, wanting that last spot on the podium just to prove a point. And there's Martin Rump. He's in second place now. March Lee's third. Alessio's fourth. Aditya Patel's fifth. Rachel Fry sixth. Danwell seventh. Yankee Sell eighth. In the amateur class, then Anthony Liu is leading from Greg Taylor, Sun Jing Zhu, uh, Vincent Floriendo, and Jeffrey Lee. He looks like he's stepped out of the track. He's uh, gone through sections one and two, so he's still on the surface and is P15 at the moment. So, March Lee. That extra weight tells. You can see Martin Rupp's now pulling away. And we just wait to see how far behind Alessio is behind Marcia Lee. You can see him in the background there. I'm sure Alessio hammer hard. He's, he was about 4.9 seconds behind Marcia Lee. He's now 2.5 seconds. So he's coming hard on Marchi Lee. There you can see Alex Young. He's 6.6 .6 seconds ahead of Martin Rump. There's Marchi Lee. And fairly soon, there's Alessio. Two and a half seconds behind, can Alessio get P3 at the end of this race? I think it's a pretty fair chance. He was two and a half seconds faster than Marchi Lee last time around. OK, there was a, an overtaking move by Martin Rump, but Marchi just doesn't seem to quite have had the pace. Whether he had some sort of issue after Marchi, uh, sorry, after Martin Rump got past him, he seems to have extended it again now. We'll see what the lap times are like, but at 2.068 for Alessio uh, Picarello last time around, 2.093 for Marchi Lee, one of the slowest cars on the field. So that's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Still, sadly, Rahel Fry unable to improve on position six. Dan Wells and Jan Kissiel still holding down position seven, number and eight for uh, KCMG. Anthony Liu is only 2.3 seconds behind Kissiel. The leading amateur class driver hasn't, sadly for him, been able to make the most out of his uh, control Michelin tyres. He was hoping to have made more inroads in the early laps. He's probably got tyres in better condition than the drivers ahead of him, but he doesn't have the experience in this new second generation Audi R8 LMS car. So uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not he can improve on that. But still, on debut, position nine and two AM Cup victories isn't a bad way to go. Another man who's uh, making his debut, he finished on the podium in the, uh, the opening race this morning on his debut in the Audi R8 LMS Cup was Australian Greg Taylor. He competes in uh, an Audi, in fact, in two Audis, in the first and second generation cars in Australia, and has been one of the front runners in both the uh, Australian GT Trophy class and also in the Australian GT Endurance Championship, finishing second recently with a, uh, another long-term Audi driver in Australia. But uh, he is enjoying his first experience here in the Cup and after finishing on the podium first time out. So we watch Martin Rump complete lap number 12. Anthony Liu was quick to admit that uh, he'd be very interested to uh, look at doing some additional racing. Last lap now, Graham. Let's take us home. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Now, the main story here is can Alessio get past Marchi Lee? He was 2.5 seconds behind Marchi. He's got it down to about 1.1, so he's closing all the time. Alessio is one of the fastest cars on the track at the moment. Marchi Lee has that extra 50 kg. There's going to be the winner. Mark Alex Young, he's got uh, about 14 turns to negotiate, but there's Marchi Lee with that extra weight. Alessio can see him and he's grabbing, he's in the slipstream. This could be very interesting in the last half of the circuit. Martin Rump's almost guaranteed P2. Alex Young just going over this hill at uh, turn seven, full throttle, hammered down all the way through seven, eight, and nine. Let's look and just see in the background if we can uh, see Martin Rump and Martin Lee with Alessio. It's, that's the main story for the end of the race for the finish. But Alex Young is a master at these kind of races. Gets out in front, controls the car, looks after the tyres and the car as well. And uh, he is nearly home and hosed. He comes through turn 11, this double apex. Keeps the speed going through to turn 12. Uh, there you can see Alessio is now right behind Marchi Lee. Coming into turn 14, Alex Young 
if we had a camera inside the car, it'll be beaming. He finally gets the win. He should have probably, he'll probably think to himself, should have won the first race. But uh, justice seems to be done here by uh, Alex Young, winning round eight. He comes through the final turn, and the Malaysian master is back on top. He wins round eight of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Second Martin Rump. Let's see what's happening here. Look at Alessio. He's going to do one last gamble. Is he going to get past? We don't know. We look at the timing. It looks like Martin Lee wins P3. Alessio is P4. Aditya Patel P5. Sixth is Rahul Fry. Then it's Dan Wells from Jan Kissel. Ninth Anthony Lou, he wins a double for the day on the amateur class. Tenth was Frankie Chen. Eleventh, Greg Taylor. He just went for the Australian to come over the line. KOU's done quite well. He managed to get up to uh, back up to P12. As we uh, just wait for the rest of the cars to come through. But Alex Young wins round eight. Should put him back onto the top of the standings and we'll just wait for the cars to uh, come over the line KOU Greg Taylor now P11 KOU P12 and we just wait for three more cars to come over the line Sun Jing Zhu finishes P13 Vincent Florendo and Jeffrey Lee have finished so all 15 have finished the race just goes to show how durable and dependable these Audi cars are 15 went out 15 have come back so let's give you the full order of finish the winner Alex Young second was Martin Rump from Estonia third Marty Lee fourth a great drive that's got to be drive of the day Alessio Piccarello goes from P13 finishes fourth then Aditya Patel from India Swiss Rahul Fry is sixth, Dan Wells from England, but uh, drives under the Hong Kong license is in seventh. Jan Kissel, opponent eighth, then the top amateur is Anthony Liu in ninth. Frankie Chen is tenth, Greg Taylor of Australia, amateur in eleventh. South Korea's KOU is twelfth, then thirteenth, Sun Jing Zhu. Fourteenth for the Philippines is Vincent Florendo, and fifteenth is Jeffrey Lee. So in the amateur class, uh, the podium will be Anthony Liu, Greg Taylor, and Sung Jing Zhu. So when Alex Young comes into part firm eight, I'm sure he'll be very happy. More talkative than a couple of hours ago, I guess. And uh, as you can see, this circuit great is well planned out with uh, three long straights and then the second half is about 14 turns a good technical challenging circuit for the drivers they like coming here and uh, as I say it's uh, definitely um, a great circuit now we're just wondering where Alex is so um, here he comes Anthony Luke the top amateur and Marchelli tries to fill in that little spot for second. So it's been an eventful weekend for Alex Young. Very happy with victory. And Martin Rump will be happy the Estonian with his second place as well with Mark Julie. If you enjoyed this weekend, don't forget we've got two more events. Mid-October, we're in Taiwan, down south Taiwan, that's the Penbei International Circuit at Kaohsiung, and then the grand finale is Shanghai in early November. Of course, you can keep up to date with all the series on Audi R8 and MS Cup .com with all the social media as well. Uh, we've got great little features, so check out the website. Uh, as you can see, the rest of the cars now just uh, coming in. And I'm sure we'll be having a great four races. But now let's join Sophie, who's got the winner, Alex Shum. Alex, does this way make up the disappointment you had this morning? Oh, no, <laughs> no it won't make up for the disappointment. I mean, it was, what happened in the first race was very, 
But, you know, I'm leading the championship, so uh, I'll take it. Um, Carl was great. Team has done such a good job this weekend. Carl has been great from the from first practice, so uh, I can't ask for anything more. OK, congratulations once more, and Thank enjoy you. your victory. Back to our commentator. Thank you, Sophie. And as you say, Alex Jung takes a lead now to Taiwan. And we'll just uh, sure we'll hear from Martin Rump very soon. He had a great drive as well. He uh, was in P4 behind Alex Young, but uh, Martin Lee did a sterling job by uh, keeping Martin Rump at bay for a long time. But Martin Rump finally got his way past the former R8 NOS Cup champion, Martin Lee. And we'll be uh, hearing very soon from Martin as to how he managed to get past March Lee and get into second place. So here's Sophie now with the Estonian Martin Rump. Martin, you have some highs and lows in the season, but this is, is definitely another high with second place here in Korea. Yeah, definitely. I would say yesterday was tough for us. Uh, the first race as well here, um, it was quite tricky, um, but it was kind of a setback, but as the champion spirit I showed, I think uh, bouncing back in the second race, it uh, feels amazing and finishing on a high the weekend for, for the next round. And push hard and enjoy the day. <laughs> back to the guys. Thanks, Sophie. So we've had a great weekend here. Mark Lee will be very happy himself. He wins one race and Phoenix Racing Asia win both races this weekend on Super Sunday. And I'm sure he'll be uh, delighted with this weekend's racing. So let's now join. We'll, we'll just wait for Sophie to get a hold of March. I'm sure March is kind of just talk to the mechanics as well, being excited. So now I think Sophie's grabbed hold of March Elite and they're down in Park Fermi. March, you held off Martin as long as you could have. Is, uh, was this the best move that you could have, uh, especially given the extra 50 kg in your car? Yes, the 50 kg is very difficult in the point that Martin is coming really strong and I didn't fight with him, I just let him go. And uh, you know, if I held him on, Alessio is coming, so it's not good for both of us. So I decide I would like to have 15 kilos extra penalty in Taiwan only. Then I can win Taiwan again. Good luck in Taiwan. <laughs> Back to our commentator. Very shrewd move there. Good strategy by March Elite. Get rid of that 50 kgs. Um, so it means in Taiwan in mid October, then Alex Young will have. 50 kgs and Martin Rump will be on 30 kgs, Marchi will be on 20. So that's how they finished. Alex Young, Martin Rump and Marchi Lee fill the pro drivers podium. Fourth was Alessio Piccarello. He had a great drive, as I said previously. Started row seven in P13 and he went right up to P4. Then in fifth place, Aditya Patel for India. Then sixth, Rahul Fry from Switzerland. Seventh, Dan Wells, his first weekend. He had a good finish. Eighth, Jan Kissel from Poland. Ninth, Anthony Lou, just to confirm, wins the amateur division of round eight here at the Korea International Circuit. Tenth was Frankie Chen, who had that spin mid-race. And that put pay to his chances of getting on the podium. Eleventh was Greg Taylor. He second on the podium for the amateur class. 12th KOU, he dropped down to P15 and uh, he managed to uh, finish the race very well and uh, crossed the line and took the checker flag at P12. Then there was Sung Jin Zhu and uh, Vincent Florendo was 14th and 15th was Jeffrey Lee. So we just wait now for them to go to the podium. I'm sure they're just... Uh, chatting amongst themselves over how their races were won and lost. As I say, Taiwan, Kaohsiung, mid-October, and Shanghai, the grand finale, early November. Can be a great four races to go for 2016.
So we're just waiting here. As you can see, they're getting set up for the podium. So uh, just waiting for them to come out. You can see the scrutineers just uh, checking over the cars at Park Fermi. Just making sure that uh, it was all present and correct. And now we have the start of the podium presentations. <laughs> see Marty Lee just uh, not happy with, uh, just jokingly with Martin Ruff about to uh, overtaking him. So, uh, Marchi in third place. Second place from Estonia, Martin Rupp. And the winner, and he takes 25 points from this race for round eight of the Audi R8 Levis Cup is Alex Jung from Malaysia. So the winner, Alex Jung. And now we have the trophy presentations. I think this time the champagne will probably get sprayed around a little bit. Alex takes the winner's trophy. Trophy. And in third place, we have Marcelli. Group photo, I think. photo with everyone and then it's going to be a dash from the area when the champagne gets open
Thank you. And now everyone scarpers. So that was the professional podium presentation. In a couple of minutes, we're going to be having the amateur presentation. Anthony Lou, of course, was the winner of the AM class. Double winner today on Super Sunday, seven and eight. We're in the bag for Anthony Lou. Chinese driver with absolute racing. podiums for today. Job well done. And the winner again is Anthony Lu from China. So Anthony gets his second trophy of the day. Greg Taylor gets the runners up trophy. Sung Jing Zhu gets a third place trophy. So that is the podium for the amateur class. Quick group photo. Don't forget, Taiwan and Shanghai are last two events in October, November. Check out the website, Audi R8 LMS Cup.com. We've also uh, got loads of uh, interesting content on social media as well so follow the series to its conclusion on audi r8 lmscup.com as we have one last group photo with everyone and then the champagne will be sprayed quick. Oh, maybe they're going to save the champagne for later. And that's it. That's how rounds seven and eight happen. So hope you've enjoyed the coverage. We've got, as I say, two more events coming up with uh, Penn Bay International Circuit and the Shanghai International Circuit in October and November. And let's now go down to Sophie. She's actually down at the podium. 
Lazio once again leads the championship after an intensive and exciting unexpected race weekend here in Korea. But there is still plenty of strong rivals in the hunt behind him uh, because we still have two more stops to go. Next up, we're all heading to Taiwan. So I hope you can still stay tuned with us. Later on, we still have a press conference to go. So please take a look.